Well, I think I get it. The ups and downs, like a roller coaster. Yeah, but that's just one chapter. There's Haunted House, The Hall of Mirrors, Ride Maintenance. <laughs> How about the rides that make you throw up? <laughs> that's great. But they're all in here. And the point is, you might not like all the attractions, but you have to accept the whole park. <laughs> this is the couple that wrote it. They're both licensed clinical social workers, but they're funny too. Yeah, they look funny. <laughs> yeah, they're funny, but they can help. Well, great. Thanks. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just gonna go out there. In those days, it only cost 50 cents to see a movie. And you got two movies, a newsreel, and a stage show. Your mother had to keep it shut for five hours. <laughs> and can you remember they used to give you plates? You could make a whole set? And when we got the green ones, we didn't like them. We brought them back. You won't believe what I got in the kitchen. What? Marriage advice from Amy. Well, unless the advice was more sex, how dare she? <laughs> she gave me this book because she thinks I need it. Who are these two idiots? <gasps> you believe Amy? I mean, she's been married for three months. She probably still shaves her legs. <laughs> Giving you advice. I know. Don't you think it's cool how I'm not rubbing your face in, how obviously wrong you were? Dinner is served. Oh. OK, let's all sit down. Oh, doesn't that look nice, Amy? Oh, thanks. One chicken? <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Now I would like to propose a toast to my bride. Oh. 90 days. That is what we have shared. 90 days. The usual sentence for vagrancy. <laughs> but I never knew that such a short time could be so full of joy. Oh, Robert. And yet, the time has also gone so quickly. 90 days. <laughs> yeah, how many days is this going to take? No, well, no, that's all right. I don't want to get overly sentimental. I just want to say that I think we all know how hard it is to find true love in this world, and I think that I was one of the lucky ones. So, Amy, no matter how long we're together, you will always be forever my love. <laughs> Pass the beans, will you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I should really say something about my husband now. Oh, be <laughs> what? No, nothing. It's fine. Go right ahead. I don't understand. What's wrong? It's just that uh, you two are pouring not a little thick, don't you think? It's our anniversary. <laughs> Three months just waiting for him to come out of the bathroom. I spent ten months just waiting at the bottom of the stairs yelling, come on, your hair looks fine. I've had three and a half years of him just burping. I'm burping your food. Yeah, I should probably poison yours. Well, maybe I'll give it some flavor. Hey, listen oh, here. What's going on here? Yes, this is unseemly. <laughs> Did we offend you somehow? Uh, I think I can explain, Amy. You see, they're jealous. What? <laughs> Why? Because we are happy. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> yeah, and don't give us any more books like Marriage is a Circus, Embrace Your Clown. <laughs> I didn't mean to upset you with what, that. What book? It's a marriage guide. In fact, Marie, I got you and Frank one. <laughs> Hey! Hi. 
Go ahead, Frank. Tell him about the washing machine. Well, it seemed to be working fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good, good. So I took it apart. <laughs> You know what your problem is? This part won't go back in. Don't worry. I called a real repairman. He'll be here tomorrow between 10 and 2. Well, good luck to him. I couldn't fix it, and I'm the smartest guy I know. <laughs> Hello, Raymond. What's with you? Well, I swung by after work to thank Ma. She dropped off a batch of her chicken cacciatore today. You love Ma's chicken cacciatore, don't you, Raymond? Yeah, that's right, I do. Well, here, I saved you a little. <sighs> oh, Ma, you made it with the sweet peppers I like. And it was just for me and Amy. Oh, and you know, I'm glad I came by because Jeffrey told me the funniest thing. Yeah, he told me that you two were playing some kind of trick on Grandma and Grandpa. And uh, I couldn't get anything else out of him, but I have to tell you, it did pique my interest. So, um, what's up, tricksters? What the hell is going on here? You playing a trick on me? No, 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 it's nothing. It's nothing. The, the trick was that, uh... We didn't go to dinner in a movie tonight. I don't understand. Why would you play a trick on where you went? <laughs> because we actually went to a hotel. <laughs> you know, with with the kids, we never have time to ourselves. So, so we decided to make it a special night. Of passion. <laughs> yes. We ordered room service and massages and rekindled our love. And, you know, just, we didn't want to say anything because it's a little embarrassing. But the truth is out. About our sex. Well, how nice for you. Don't get any ideas, Marie. Anyone else want to get the hell out of here? OK. Thanks for babysitting. Thank you. Okay, okay. Sorry about the trick. <laughs> I go to hotels to get away from my wife. <laughs> Ooh. I feel a little bad. Why? You know what? We're pretty good at this. I know. Maybe a little too good. Hey, we wouldn't have to be if it wasn't for your mother. We're living in a predatory environment. We have to camouflage. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. I just didn't want to hurt her feelings about last night. So, I did like that whole sex in the hotel part. <laughs> I did, too. I mean, you came up with part of the story, then I came up with part, then you, then me. We had a great little rhythm. <laughs> it's like our own little sex capade. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of capade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to go up? Mm, wow. <laughs> this will be twice in one night if you count the lie. Who likes it when I give a night? About the races. You don't make the children race, do you? No, no, no. No, no, adults only, yeah. You got to be at least this tall. Yeah. So that's how you both fell. A race around the house which you often do as a tradition. Uh, Right 
I am. I'm in enough pain. <laughs> there you go. I must say you're doing surprisingly well after taking such a fall, Mr. Barone. No injuries other than a broken rib. Oh, thank God. You heard what he said. I'm fine. No kissing. <laughs> I told him not to fix the stairs. I knew something like this would happen. I can't bear to see him hurt. Why are you such a stubborn idiot? Doctor, can I have this removed? <laughs> Doctor, before you go, is there such a thing as a personality transplant? <laughs> OK. Crazies, we're in public here. Hey, Doc, what's this stuff dripping into me? Oh, that's just some painkiller to help with any discomfort. But I'm not experiencing any discomfort. That's because it's probably starting to work. Oh. <laughs> Way to go, tube and baggy. <laughs> yes. Now, a nurse will be in at the end of the day to uh, give you your discharge papers. Papers? Don't you guys have bedpans anymore? <laughs> You see what you did to him, huh? All of this because you and Deborah fell down the stairs. All right, Robert. Oh, Robert. oh doctor, why are you still here? Would you just take a look at my son's wrist? Yeah, and, and Ray, when was the last time someone looked at that testicle? Dad! <laughs> oh, God. No one's checked it since he was a kid. It's all right, Dad. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Nothing to be ashamed of. OK, Dad. <laughs> and Deborah, you should uh, show the doctor your shoulder no, there. No, I'm I'm fine, Frank. Really, thank you, though. They took a tumble down the stairs. Both of you? Unusual, isn't it? We have these little races. Yeah, you know, Ray. Maybe you should let the doctor check out your wrist. I'm sure you and Deborah want to get back to your active lifestyle as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's fine. See, it's all better. Really? Let's arm wrestle. Get away. Give it to me! Get out of here. <laughs> but, doctor, really, you should take a look in his shorts. No! <laughs> There's a problem with one of the manberries. That... <laughs> hey. Yeah. It's never mind. Okay, then, if you don't need me, Mr. Barone, you try and take it easy. Okay, and, and, and hey, you take it easy, too. <laughs> hey, peace. I'm so sorry this happened, Frank. Hey, I was happy to fix your stairs, Deborah, because you needed it done. And if I had to break a hundred ribs, a small price to pay for the family stairs. Yes. I take care of my family. Family. That's a funny word. Family. Family, family, family. I, I gotta go pick up the kids. Do you yeah. wanna walk me out? Yeah, I'll go with you. Okay, I'll we'll see. Hey, if you guys are racing, I get winners. <laughs> we can never have sex again. What? what? Look at your father, lying in there hurt, and all because we... And now, whenever I'm going to think of him, working on those stairs, and then all of a sudden, his little bald head dropping out of sight. <laughs> well, here's something you might try. Think of me when we're having sex. <laughs> Awful, Ray. We lied to him, and now he has a broken rib. We broke his rib. We may as well have rolled off that bed and onto him. We just found out that you told Mom. Okay, Raymond, I'm up to speed. <laughs> How come you told your mother about Amy? You didn't tell me. You didn't ask. You asked? I care about people. Why would you ask that about me? Well, you know, I can explain it. Run. <laughs> Just run and keep running. Robert, why would you tell your mother that? So she'd like you better. Worse, you lied, so she'd like me better. A lie of love. <laughs> God, I keep forgetting what a freak show this family is until somebody new comes in and looks at us like that. <laughs> I 
remember that look. That used to be me. No, I'm one of them. I take exception to that, Deborah. Well, I take exception to what you think, Marie. You think just because you were a good girl in the 50s, that gives good you the Good girl? Ah. Oh, thanks. No! Oh, oh, the hell are you talking about? Is that true, Marie? I... I... I, I, I uh, 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 Go ahead, Marie. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> and I succumbed to temptation once. <laughs> Just once before we were married. I, I was weak, and I fell for your father's boyish good looks. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I knew it. I knew we shouldn't do what we did, but we were in love. Right, Frank? I wanted sex. <laughs> It was a long time ago. So it was just the once, and then you got married? It was just the once, and then we had to get married. Right, no! <laughs> oh, whoa, had to get married? Wait, wait a minute, so Robert's... What? We got married after I found out I was pregnant. And then Robbie came along seven months later. Our plan was to tell people he was two months premature. <laughs> then he was born. Try passing off a 12-pound baby as premature. <laughs> Try passing it, period. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's nine months, right? You, you, you were married in September, and my birthday's in June. That's when we told you your birthday was. What? Oh. It, was it was easier that way, Robbie. Oh, well, as long as it was easy. <laughs> well, there you go, Raymond. You were conceived legitimately. You win again. Come on, Robert, what? There's no winning. Oh, I guess I should know. When is my real birthday? April 6th. That's today. Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Attention, everybody. Guess who is now a published writer? Talking about. Today, the mailman bought me fame and fortune. The Reader's Digest, over 27 million copies sold in 19 languages. And all around the world, each and every reader will now open to page 64, the humor in uniform section. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, boy, how did that happen? Did you know, Ma? Did you know he was doing this? Please. You think he could get this done by himself? The man can't wipe his own chin. Marie was my little typist. Yeah, don't call me a little typist. <laughs> so uh, why don't you read it out loud, Ray? Hey. No, no, we don't. That's not necessary, Dad. We'll read it. No, no, come on. You have such a nice speaking voice. <laughs> uh, throughout our first week of basic training. Louder and funnier. 
Our drill stand sergeant. Stand up, oh, stand up. Come on. Up, 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 up. There you go, there you go. Our drill sergeant stressed to us the importance of addressing all officers with what he called a sir sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Sir, I don't know, sir, and the like. A few days later, a colonel approached me in the motor pool and asked what I was working on. Using the sir sandwich, I said, sir, checking the oil, sir, in these Jeeps, sir, and sir, checking the tires, sir. The colonel laughed and said, Private, I appreciate your respect, but I don't need a Sir Club sandwich. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> True story. <laughs> hey, Ray, what do you think? Oh, it's a classic, Dad. <laughs> and that's not all. Look at this. I check. For three hundred dollars, I'd frame it, but then I couldn't take my little typist out for a fancy dinner. <laughs> Every time you call me that, it's going to cost you three hundred bucks. Michael threw his milk at me. Oh. Isn't that great? That could be my second story. The digest loves a naughty baby. <laughs> Teenage boys can be shy and awkward. Their voices crack, their skin breaks out, and they're afraid of anything in a dress. This was especially true for my son, Roy. Dad, you're writing about me. It says Roy. Oh, thanks, Dodd. <laughs> hey, look, I'm using what we call artistic license there. Sure, I'm writing about my kid, but it's got to come off like anybody's kid. You see, I have to write as the everyman. You're the everyman. Right. It's got to mean something to Deborah and Marie, the guy in snowbound Sweden looking for a laugh. Oh, especially him. Yeah, OK. Look, Dad, I got a column due in about an hour. All right, so I'm going to see you. OK. Roy, being a typical teenager, was besieged by raging hormones. <laughs> making it difficult for him to keep his mind on his studies. Oh, he's the everyman. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if every man was Frank Perot? Nope. Boy, wouldn't Sizzler love that? Yeah. Do me a favor, please, keep every man out of here. How <laughs> am I supposed to do that? How fast can you make a pot roast? <laughs> so what's the column about, Ray? Oh. Gotta go. Oh, it's the Giants, Dad. <laughs> go on, go on. Don't let me bother you. This is the toughest part, isn't it? What? That, the blank page. It just sits there and mocks you, dares you. Annoys you, bothers you. I guess so. Well, go on, write. Conquer the blank page. I'm not even here. Shouldn't you indent? Hey, there's a big black car parked in your driveway. Yeah, yeah, you know, devil has got some company, all right? So you know who drives big black cars? The feds. <laughs> it's my car. I'm here to see Deborah. Oh, wait a minute. Say something else. Hello, I'm Dr. Nora. Oh, that voice. Are you Dr. Nora? That's me. Oh, I can't tell you what a huge fan I am of yours. You taught me to express myself. Thanks a bunch, lady. <laughs> These are the kind of parents that keep you in business. <laughs> We live right across the street. Really? How you fix for pie, Ray? I take it the boundaries are rather informal. Oh, uh, they're rather invisible. Really. <laughs> oh, you and I have a lot in common. All right, my Dr. Nord's got time to write you one quick prescription, then you gotta go. Okay? <laughs> oh, I am so glad that Deborah's seeing someone, you know. I mean, just between us. What's wrong with her? <laughs> So you're a radio doctor, huh? Uh-huh. 
You wouldn't think you'd have to be on the radio with that figure. Right. <laughs> it's a compliment. Yeah, it, he used to write for Hallmark. <laughs> you still don't know how to behave, do you? Hey, leave me alone, I'm talking. You're not talking, you're embarrassing. You always do that to me. Like with Lee and Stan in the restaurant. Like, you know what I'm you not do? listening oh, anymore. Now you're gonna start do saying, that, see, do he's gonna have to kind of drown me out. How do you like it if I say, oh, Frank Morgan, will you shut up tonight? Shut up tonight, shut up tonight. Frank Morgan, will you shut up tonight? Shut up tonight, shut up tonight. Hey, stop it, Mom. Look, company. Right, come here. Dr. Nora is here to talk to me, not to Peaches and Herb. I know, I know. All right, don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of them. Please. Don't call my mother Herb. Hey. Hey. Oh, Robert! I want you to meet Dr. Nora, the famous psychologist from the radio. Hello! Is this about me? Actually, it, it's not about any of you. Dr. Nora's here to talk to me, so thanks for visiting. Oh, Deborah, I would love if they would stay. I, I think they'd add an interesting dimension to the piece. Hey, Chips. You hear that? We're interrupting. And your husband is very funny. <laughs> He's gonna quote me. Oh, well, you know, actually, that's why I married him, Dr. Nora, for his sense of humor. <laughs> you see, um, we met when I was doing PR for a hockey team, and I know what you're gonna say. Oh, a woman in hockey. But actually, um, it wasn't as, um, I, well, but I'm not sure if that's the, uh, kind of information that you're looking for, would you like me to get right to our sex life? Excuse me. Are you very nervous right now, or do you do that all the time? Do what? I'm no expert in body language, but stop yelling. <laughs> Dr. Nora was supposed to be here for me, not your family, and by the end, she didn't even know I was in the room. Oh, sure she did. Who'd she think was bringing her all that pie? <laughs> of course she was interested in them. Some shrink's gotta go to 40 institutions to find all the action she found in that room. <laughs> Yeah, she's pretty interested in you, too, huh? And me. A little bit. <laughs> I think she was very impressed with my weekly underwear schedule. <laughs> wow, eight years. Eight years you made fun of me. Come on. Dr. Nora thought I was boring. Look, you're not boring. You're normal. All right? That's good. Growing up in my family, I prayed for normal every night. <laughs> then I'd fall asleep to the sound of my brother naming his toes. Listen, thanks again, Maria. I'm just gonna do a little shopping with Ray. I'm sorry the situation with the girl didn't work out. She seems sweet, but children watching children. <laughs> Allie, honey, come on. Okay, well, I really appreciate this. Please, you know I love doing this. And... And I don't want you to think that you even have to apologize. I'm sorry, Marie. Oh, that is so unnecessary. <laughs> Just knowing you feel bad is enough for me. There you are. When is Lisa coming? Honey, I told you Lisa's not coming today. Grandma's babysitting today. Does Grandma know how to play Space Station? Yes, she does. <laughs> well, sweetheart, say goodbye to Mommy, and then we'll play. Mommy, I want to go with you. Oh, oh I knew you all wanted to go with you. Oh, thank you. OK, well, I'll be home real soon, OK? I'll see you later. Mommy loves you. Mwah, 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 mwah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. 
So maybe we can go to a movie later. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Jeez, Lou, it's about time. <laughs> oh, Marie, what happened? What's going on? We were doing that crazy game that the girl taught the kids. <laughs> and someone had allowed toys to be in the middle of the floor, and I tripped. Oh, my God, what can I do? Do you have a lawyer? <laughs> you gonna sue us, Dad? Not you. Your insurance company. <laughs> we split it. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the children? Uh, they're in Allie's room. I didn't want them to see me like this. Oh. <laughs> hey, I, God, I feel terrible. Here we go. I'm here for you, Ma. I told Nemo you were hurt. He threw in some free breadsticks. Uh, <laughs> these seem old. You are what you eat. <laughs> uh, uh, Robbie. Give your father his order of miserable bastard. Come on, Mom. Let's get you in your own bed. Dad, give us a hand. Come on. You know, it might be easier if we just switch houses. Frank, can you help, please? Coming, sunshine. <laughs> Anything you need, you just let me know. Nice. <laughs> hey, hey, they left the breadsticks. <laughs> she is really hurt. Oh, I am such a jerk. He left some toys around. What? It happens. What? No, what? Please stop. I didn't mean you left them around. I, they got left around. Come on. The kids probably left them. The stinking kids. No, Ray, it's my fault. No, no, it isn't. Yes, it is, because I set her up. I just couldn't stand how much the kids wanted to be with Lisa, so I got your mom to babysit so it wouldn't go as well. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You... You told a, a perfectly nice girl not to come because you thought the kids liked her too much? Mm-hmm. And then you, you, you brought in old Yella to make yourself feel better? <laughs> Terrible. I'm this evil person. I love this. So she ate them. That's right, because two donuts are enough. Well, how many did you have? Why do you change the subject? Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know what to do. I know what to do. Get out. <laughs> What's the matter, dear? Michael might get left back in preschool. What? Oh, interesting. <laughs> What? What's so interesting? What? Is he stupid? Nobody's stupid, Frank. Michael's a little young for the class, and besides, girls mature faster than boys. Oh, so I guess Jeffrey's fine then. Yeah. Right. Stop it, Frank. Raymond's upset. It's okay, dear. It's just preschool. That's what I told him. And if he has to stay, Jeffrey will stay with him. Oh, that's good. Yeah. No, no, no. Why not, Frank? Law of nature. You get left behind, you get eaten. <laughs> You're too soft on the kids. You got to push them. Push them forward. Just keep pushing them. Until when, Frank? Until they cry. <laughs> that's nature's way of letting you know you pushed enough. Here's a man they let have two children. Raymond, don't worry about the boys. They're beautiful, sweet yeah. boys. They're going to fly away soon enough. Yeah, all right, Ma. Look, I want them to move up to kindergarten and be with the other children. Other children are overrated. <laughs> it won't hurt Michael and Jeffrey to stay little one more year. 
You know, that's what I did with you. What? <laughs> it's, it's funny. <laughs> I never told you this, but when you were the twins' age, do you remember nursery school used to be on J Street with the pretty yellow flowers out front? Well, you and I would walk there and back together every morning, and you were so cute holding my hand. <laughs> so when it came time for you to go to kindergarten, which was cross town with a bus, I decided it would be nice for everybody if you stayed in preschool one more year. <laughs> You left me back? Left back for love. <laughs> that and you were slow. I remember you couldn't even cut paper. <laughs> Wait, what? What was wrong with me? Nothing, sweetie. You were just a little young, too. So you stayed there one more year, and we got to walk by the yellow flowers some more. <laughs> that's, that's why I was always the oldest in my class. Yellow flowers. <laughs> you knew. No. Yes, you, of course you did. That's what was so interesting. Okay, I knew. Well, why didn't you tell me? I don't know. Well, you tell your brother this. I couldn't. Why? Because. Because why? Because I felt sorry for you. You felt sorry for me? You felt sorry for me? <laughs> Ray, it was just pre- <laughs> I was just gone. <laughs> oh. Maybe I should have waited another year to tell him. Oh, wait a second. What happened? Ah, oh, the jackass fruit guy uh, accused me of stealing. <laughs> Frank, please. They're homosexuals. <laughs> in the fruit department, the fat one. Jimmy? Oh, I love him. He's the one who gets me the good peaches. What were you stealing? Nothing. I just took a little of the snacking mix out of the thing. Oh, well, that's not stealing. Technically, Mom, it is theft. <laughs> Petty theft. Unless you ate more than $100 worth. Did you? No, I didn't, Officer Doofus. <laughs> Besides, I paid for it. Well, you, you threw a quarter at the guy. Tossed. <laughs> Frank, is this really the way you want to behave in front of your granddaughter? You know, Deborah, far be it for me to ever take his side. But I do think it's horrible what's happened to that store. They used to give you samples all the time. And they also used to help you take your bags to the car. Now I have to take you to the car myself. <laughs> I was on your side. Frank, stealing is only a part of this. Why did you have to lose your temper and then yell at the guy? He was yelling at me. Yeah, but there's other ways to handle the situation. Hey, you weren't there. The guy had it coming. But not with your granddaughter watching. It could affect her. I still twitch at toll booths. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad Allie saw that. She's got to learn you can't take crap from people. Frank, <clears throat> have you ever heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child? I believe that. And I believe that you're a part of our village. We're, we're just trying to teach them proper values. Listen, I don't know what the hell village you're talking about. <laughs> but I live in real world USA. So you can spare me your lecture. All right, you listen oh, to me. Oh, oh, come, come with well, me. Something friend. has to be done. He's a public menace. I know, I know. I think our village found its idiot. <laughs> Why don't 
did you let me kill him? Well, that would be very nice, dear. But the truth is, this all could have been avoided if Raymond had handled it better in the supermarket. What, what, what? He was an animal. Yes. And you let him off his leash. <laughs> if you take a dog to a supermarket and he has an accident in the frozen food aisle, is it the dog's fault? Did Dad ever do that? <laughs> how your father is. And there are ways to prevent this kind of scene. First of all, I try to be with him. If he's ever gonna be anywhere, there might be people. <laughs> but, but Ray was with him. What was he supposed to do? Before you even got to the snack section, you should have had a Hershey bar or a Zagnut here in your pocket. That's true, he responds to treats. <laughs> do you know why? This kind of thing doesn't happen when I'm around because I compensate. He's horrible, and I have a certain... Well, that's great, Marie. So you want to be with him all the time, then? Uh, no. Well, somebody needs to straighten him out. No, no, leave him. He'll watch television, then I'll take him home, make some cannelloni, he'll burp and he'll feel better. <laughs> You are actually rewarding his horrible behavior with Italian food. That's exactly how the mafia works. Well, I'm going to speak to him. Put some candy in your pocket. Ray, your car is blocking me, so if you... So I'll just take your car, okay? If that's okay. Yeah, okay. Well, boys, I have to get back. I've got a lot of treats to make, which will be delicious. <laughs> no, Ray, as long as I'm taking your car, do you want me to gas it up for you? <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you don't mind. No, no, it would be fun. <laughs> Frank, I I'm going to make cannelloni tonight. Sounds OK. Oh, actually, no. I instead of cannelloni, I'll make some lamb. A whole lamb. <laughs> yeah? With that mint jelly I like? Of course. Whatever you want, uh, honey. pizza for dinner. Oh. And maybe a nice bottle of wine? Oh. <laughs> Marie, no wine. <laughs> Frank, you rascal. <laughs> See you, sweetie. Bye, Frank. Bye, Robert. Okay, bye. bye. I love you, fellas. <laughs> bye, bye. Oh, oh man. Oh. We got to get these two hands together more often. I know. I know. I'll bet I can get a, a, a week of golf in Myrtle Beach. I might be able to get Marie up on the roof to clean the gutters. <laughs> You two playing your wives against each other. You're despicable. Calm down, Dainty Duck. <laughs> yeah, what? We tried to get them to stop fighting. If they want to keep it up, why should we have to suffer? There's a difference between not suffering and exploiting the situation. You should be supporting your wives, bringing them together. This is not the way for a family to behave. You know, while Marie's up on the roof, I'll have her install a satellite dish. <laughs> hey, Moonshine. <laughs> well, here she is. 
a little more expensive than I thought, but uh, it'll be worth it, you know, if I ever go on a, I don't know, golf retreat or something. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Let me ask you something, Ray. How long did you think you'd be able to use me and your mom? How's that? You didn't think I was smart enough to see what you were doing? I don't, what are, I, what are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. I'm not. This is how I am. You know, you're not exactly subtle, sitting there like some Roman emperor. Bring me my pizza, serve me my wine, pretend you're a lonely nurse. You know what the guys at the lodge were just telling me? Apparently, if you install it yourself, a satellite dish is actually quite affordable. <laughs> Makes you think, doesn't it? Anyway, make me a sandwich, will you? You want a sandwich? Uh, roast beef, mayo, mustard, lettuce, tomato, cheese, easy onion. <laughs> Sounds nice. What kind of bread? Let's go with the whole week today, shall we? All right. Ow! Oh, hey! Hey! Ow! Oh. OK, white bread, then. You didn't think I'd catch on to you, Mr. Sleazy Man? Oh, I caught on. Oh, did I catch on. Sure, getting the two of us to wait on your hand and foot, to exploiting the situation. I wish this bread was stale. I would give you a concussion! <laughs> Welcome to Honest Frank's Yard of Bargains. Oh, Hiya, yeah. kids. There we go. Okay, what have we here, well, Deborah? Well, it's mostly baby stuff. So. Okay, let's see. The crib goes in furniture. Yeah. Clothes in clothes. Right. All right. Hey, maybe I ought to start an old baby section. <laughs> They're suckers for babies. Yeah. You know what, Dad? We'll take care of all this, all right? So we're going to get rid of all this stuff, huh? Yeah, and after your dad takes his cut, we get to keep 40%. <laughs> Hey, hey, check this out. This Dad. thermos, look at this. Dad, all right, can you give us a second here, please? You see what I did? I scraped the rust off. I appeal is by appeal. 20 bucks. 20 bucks? Nobody's gonna pay that for a used thermos. They will if it was used by the Pope. <laughs> hey, fella, you Catholic? You like hot soup? Well, I can't believe we saved all this stuff, huh? What do you think, Ray, like a buck for a bag of bibs? Buck a bag of bibs. Buck a bag of bibs. Buck a bag of bibs. Can you say that? Just say, buck a bag of bibs. Buck a bag of bibs. Yeah, okay, look. So we're not going to have any more kids? What? Are you serious? I'm just, I'm wondering. I don't know. Are we supposed to? I don't know. I mean, I just, I thought that if we weren't, we both would have known about it. <clears throat> I don't think this is the place to talk about this right now. <clears throat> Oh, I wasn't listening. Listen. I'm not saying I, I definitely want more kids, but uh, I just, I didn't know we had made that decision. Well, I mean, nobody made an actual decision, Ray. It's... Well, I just thought that, I thought since we hadn't done anything drastic... Drastic? Yes, yeah, and, you know, since we hadn't... Snip, 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 snip. <laughs> That, that we could maybe... What? I don't know. Maybe we could have more kids. Excuse me. I couldn't help overhearing. Oh, God. Uh -uh. Are we talking about having more children? Ray. Yeah. Ma, look, this is between me and Deborah, okay? Yeah, and I don't think that this is the place to do this. Raymond, what did you mean by snip, 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 snip? God, now i got to have that dream. <laughs> Doing? Dad wants me to keep an eye on that one in sporting goods. You really think Mrs. Scarpool is going to steal cross country skis? Not on my watch. Hey, you two porcupines. I need you to bring that sofa bed up from the basement. Oh, Lucky? I mean, old Musty? Listen, I haven't told your mother yet, but I'm fixing a little area for her down there. 
I'm going to bring down her sewing machine, maybe a folding chair, maybe a hot plate. She'll love it. She can stay down there all day. Sounds like a sweatshop, Dad. Now, nah, I'll give her a little fan. Deborah, would you help me price these things? If we look busy, then nobody will bother us. Oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> Just was trying to look busy. Can I let you in on a little secret? Um, I wanted to have more children, too. We don't want to have more children. Oh? Well, if I overheard correctly, Raymond does. <laughs> Listen, I, I wanted to have another baby, but Frank wouldn't even hear of it. And, well, I was just crushed. You know, I love my boys, but I always wanted a little girl, too. <laughs> you know what I used to do? I used to put Robbie in a little pink dress and dance him around the room. You got any pictures of that? The reason I bring it up is that, well, we're not getting any younger, dear. And you want to plant your seedlings before winter comes and everything freezes over. <laughs> you can't talk to her. It, Robert. I'm not pushing. I'm losing my grip. I'm, pu I'm putting it down. Wait, I'm wait, wait. Down. Oh! <laughs> What's the matter? I, I told you I'm putting it down. You told me while you were putting it down. Oh, uh, you just, you slow. That's yeah, what yeah, you used to do that to me on the seesaw. I'm getting off, boom. Bring us into some kind of Venus sex trap. First of all, do not say sex trap to me. And second of all, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I resent the fact that you see me as this manipulative monster. And by the way, what would be so terrible if you and Amy had a baby? Ma, try to understand. It's not the right time right now. I understand. What do you think, Amy? Well, I think we both need to be ready. But I am ready. <laughs> No, Marie, me and Robert. Yeah, Ma, you can see that, can't you? Of course I can. I only want the best for you. Get your ass out of my house. <laughs> what? You don't mean that. Well, if they want to live in my house, there are certain rules. <laughs> ah, come on. Nobody's throwing anybody out. No, no. Let's think about this. Since Marie has been paying so much attention to them lately, she's been nagging me less. On the other hand, this has also made my dinners somewhat tardy. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, we're moving out. Come on, Amy, let's go. Robert, wait. I don't know what to say, Marie. I feel used. I mean, I fell for all this. With all due respect, this is between me and my husband. And just so you know, Robert even was willing to try, but he couldn't perform because he couldn't get you out of his mind. <laughs> Believe me, and I've tried hard. It takes a few years. <laughs> and worst of all, Robert thought that maybe you appreciated him for himself and not his... All right, take it easy. Excuse <laughs> me, I don't know where Robert gets this idea that I don't appreciate him. I do. I do. If anything, I have always favored you over Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And Robbie, I may have paid a bit more attention to Raymond, but that's only because he was a needy, soft, weak little boy. <laughs> you, on the other hand, you've always been so strong. 
I never had to worry about you being bullied on the playground because you were always a boy who, who... Had a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> Yes, maybe I was wrong to try to create conditions that would encourage you to be fruitful and multiply. As it says in the Bible. <laughs> but that's only because it would be a waste not to pass on these strong legs, these broad shoulders, and this marvelous set of teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry, Raymond, but your teeth were always a disaster. Well, that's very nice, Mom, but... do you really expect me to believe this? No. <laughs> I don't expect you to believe anything I say. I obviously have failed as a mother, and I was only hoping to have one more chance as a grandmother. Oh, but, Marie, you are a grandmother. What about our kids? Oh? Where are they? <laughs> Allie, Michael, Jeffrey. You know, it used to be that I'd walk through that door and I'd be smothered with hugs and kisses. Yeah? Grandma's here! <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> See? Oh, come on, Marie. You know they love you. Yeah. Maybe if you just gave him a little time to miss you. <laughs> What's going on? Just heating up pie. I'll have some, but wash your hands first. <laughs> What's up with you? You guys got to get your wives out of my house. They're over there looking at furniture catalogs. I told Marie, at your age, you shouldn't be looking at any furniture unless it has a lid. <laughs> Choo Choo Cholesky? Oh. Huh? Who is Choo Choo Cholesky? Ray, you better get back into your microwave position. <laughs> Look, Deborah, it's not what you think. Oh, I think you were dreaming about another woman and you told me a choo choo train story. No. You couldn't keep your giant mouth shut, could you? Uh, 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 uh. I didn't say anything, Robert, I swear. Well, someone opened their giant mouth. I did. Well, I'm sure you had your reasons. <laughs> Mom? Your father told me about your little fantasy, and I felt I'd be remiss if I didn't tell Deborah that her marriage was in peril. <laughs> Dad, why would you tell Mom? I was proud of you. You dream like a man. Okay, well, that's great, Ray. I'm going around telling everybody what a sweet little boy you are, and you're dreaming about another woman. Thanks a lot, Ray. Thanks for making me look like a total oh, jerk. Wait, I made it up. I made it up. Choo Choo really was a train. So what are you saying? You lied to them? And here I was finally proud of you. <laughs> Unbelievable, Ray. No, you know what? You're unbelievable. You took something that was private and you blabbed it all over town. Oh, yeah? Well, you were a pretty good blabbermouth yourself last night. Hey, guess who pees when she laughs? <laughs> guess who was right there with me laughing it up? Oh, Amy pees. Ha, 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 ha. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Amy, Amy, listen, listen, I'm so, sweetie, uh, uh, come on, look at me. We were all talking, everyone was doing it. <laughs> uh, 
Debra Belch is like a truck driver and Ma uses ragu. <laughs> Make it up. Look, there it is. There it is. Ah. All right. All right. A lot of things have been said. And I have no problem facing the truth, however painful it might be. Now, about my sauce, Frank, tell them you're a liar. What? Do you ever want to eat again? I lied. I'm a crazy old man who lies. And I'm glad that you could admit that. And you should all know better than to engage in idle gossip. But what are you talking about? You're the one who blabbed it to Deborah about Choo Choo Chulusky. I do not blab. What I do comes from love. <laughs> and if you want to know the truth, Deborah is the worst gossip of us all. Me? You're the one who once told me that Frank came to bed with a toupee on for you. What? <laughs> That was a hat I found on the street. <laughs> oh, really? And what about what Deborah told Amy last July? What? Deborah told Amy that Raymond thought that Amy and Robert's marriage didn't have a chance in hell. Marie, who told you that? M Marie, I told you that in confidence. Amy, how could you tell Marie that I said that? Deborah, how could you tell Amy what I told you? My marriage doesn't have a chance in hell? <laughs> Oh, I thought I saw you two come in here. I've been looking out the window for the last two days. She scared the crap out of the mailman. Oh, you two look so wonderful. Uh, thanks, Ma. You look nice, too. Hey, Ma. Oh, come on. Let's sit down. I want to hear everything. Ma, I just said hi. Raymond, can't you see we're having a conversation? <laughs> Home with his beautiful new bride. Oh. Hi, Ma. <laughs> oh, we have presents. Presents, too? What you see, you two, is a present. Open the bag. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to. This is the most thoughtful gift anyone has ever given me. What is it? It's a piece of shrapnel. <laughs> it's from World War II in Anzio. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'll bet it's from the ass of some kraut. <laughs> oh, look. A pin. That's antique. A oh. hundred years old. Oh. Antique. Oh. Frank, look. What do you think? A hundred years old. I think it's lovely. Just lovely. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, this is so nice. Oh, speaking of gifts, how did you like what Lee and Stan got you for your wedding present? Oh, yes. What was it again? Some sort of porcelain thing or a sculpture? Oh, no, no, no. It was a large, crystally covered candle, which they had made with your wedding invitation in a kind of window within the wax so that when the candle burns down, the invitation is illuminated from behind. <laughs> one? <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, it was beautiful. <laughs> I thought it was so clever. <laughs> they just wanted to make sure you got it. Oh, yeah, we got it. Because <laughs> they had it specially made. We got it, Ma. Very nice. <laughs> so I'll tell them that you got it. They didn't know. <laughs> because they didn't get a thank you note. <laughs> Oh, well, Mom, they're going to get a thank you note. It's just, you know. Okay, of course, just, uh, you're going to send one, right? I mean, you're going to be sending out thank you notes, aren't you, Amy? Yeah, sure, Marie, I'll get to it. Okay, good. When you say get to it... <laughs> when do you think you'd be doing them? Because 
people have been commenting. What do you mean? Who's commenting? People. So, Amy, when can I tell the people to expect their thank you notes? Well, can I be honest with you, Marie? Uh-oh. <laughs> You can say anything to me. We're family. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you know, we just got back from our honeymoon and... Uh, uh, what? Nothing. I just thought you were going to be honest with me. I mean, to tell the truth, you two have been home for a, a day and a half now, haven't you? <laughs> well, we just... Wanted to unwind for a bit. <laughs> But you knew I was waiting. No call or anything. I was so worried I called the airlines. I thought, what if there was a plane crash? But when they said, of course, there was none, I have to tell you, I was a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and now, to make such a fuss, when I'm just asking about thank you notes, you know, I would like to think that we're at least grateful for the good fortune and generosity bestowed upon us by people who love us. Thank you for my shrapnel. <laughs> Michael, oh, Jeffrey. Mike, Jeff. Are you okay? Oh, nothing. You're okay. Huh? Oh, you're okay. He's okay. Is this he okay? okay. Give me that. Give me that again. Give me that again. Oh, my God. They seem okay. Okay. Yeah, they're okay. Oh, it's okay, boys. Mommy didn't mean to leave you. Ray! They need reassurance. Oh, my poor angels. Oh, oh, it's okay. Oh. They're okay, Marie. Oh, I'm never leaving you Marie, again. they're fine. Yeah, they're okay. You're fine, right, boys? Look, Daddy, pancakes. Shapes like bunnies. <gasps> you made pancakes? Oh, my God. <laughs> I got, who told you you could make pancakes? I smell pancakes. <laughs> you know how dangerous it is to be playing with a stove? Where are the pancakes? You want a pancake, Grandpa? What the hell have I been saying here? <laughs> Allie, when did you get here? The Spencers dropped me off a little while ago. So you were alone here with the boys? You made the pancakes? Yeah, the boys were hungry, so I fed them. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, well, look at everything. It looks fine. Well, you, you did a good job. Well, that's great. You're daddy's big girl, aren't you, honey? Give me a pancake. <laughs> Give me three pancakes. I only had a couple left, Grandpa, and they came out kind of ugly. The stomach knows not ugly. <laughs> oh, Allie, honey, if it wasn't for you, your mother could be facing criminal charges. <laughs> Not if everybody keeps their mouth shut. Listen, Marie, everything is fine. It's not what you think. You think I want to think these things? I don't. But then I look around and, uh... <laughs> and every time I look around, you know what I... Hey, hey, try one of these. Look, it's a bunny. Hi, I'm a bunny. Oh, the bottom of a cow. <laughs> I'm done. Bye. <laughs> Come on, Marie, make me a lunch. Honey, listen, I'll get that. I can do it. No, honey, you've helped Mommy out enough. Yes, you have, dear, and thank God for you. <laughs> you have learned responsibility and cooking against all odds. <laughs> have to happen right in front of her. Yeah. But if you think about it, everything we do happens right in front of her. Are we terrible parents? Probably. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, how bad could we be? Look. Look at her. She did great. She, she took care of everything. We must be doing something right. We raised a kid who's raising the rest of the kids. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how it's supposed to be. Would you like oh, another pancake, yeah, Daddy? Yeah, I'm starving. Look, I made you a football. Oh, you're, you're like an artist, a pancake artist. That's the kind of art that Daddy appreciates. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing this stuff. Is there anything else I could do? 
You mean you want to do more stuff around the house? Sure, it was fun. Of course it's fun. It's fun to help mommy. <laughs> I mean, I would be thrilled to get some more help around here. There's cleaning and laundry and... Cooking. <laughs> well, maybe sometime when you guys go out, I can babysit for real. Oh, I don't know, honey. But you said I did a good job with the boys. It's true, right? Twins alive, house... <laughs> house not on fire, pancakes in stomach. Well, a lot of girls her age do babysit. And cook. <laughs> In some countries, she'd be married and running her own farm. I don't know. It still makes me a little nervous. Yeah. You know, to tell you the truth, honey, when it comes to babysitting, we kind of leave that up to Grandma. <laughs> you know what, honey? Why don't you babysit for us tomorrow? I can babysit? Wait, wait, wait. No, no. You can babysit. Yeah. 